Hey, Walter Sorrels back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, making a Phillips head screwdriver. Today we're going to make a Phillips head screwdriver. Now there's some qualifications of that, but we'll dig into that once the project gets underway. Now before I get started, I should mention that this is part of a multi-video series showing a whole set of tools that I made for my son Jake on his 21st birthday. If you're interested in that, click on the link in the cards and description. Otherwise, let's forge on into it. This will be a fairly quick video because most of what I'm doing here has already been covered in my previous screwdriver making videos. If you haven't seen them yet, link in the cards and descriptions. As with the previous screwdrivers, I'll be making both of them from 01 steel drill rod. One from quarter inch stock and the other from 3 16th inch. Now it's worth looking up close at a Phillips head screwdriver before we get started. This is a true Phillips head screwdriver. It's milled with some kind of special tool that's just made for the job. It's not an off the shelf tool. So you have symmetrical tapered webs as you can see right here. Now we won't actually be making a true Phillips head screwdriver. We'll use a conventional half inch end mill and this will result in a screwdriver head that works fine on Phillips head fasteners though strictly speaking it's slightly different in design. The difference is that the cross section of the webbing is not going to be tapered the same way and therefore it's not as thick and therefore in theory not quite as strong. Now when was the last time you broke the tip off a Phillips head screwdriver? Yeah, never. The screw always gives out before the screwdriver, so I'm not concerned in the least about that. Also, there are advantages to this straight web type design. Google the subject of Posa Drive and Phillips head screwdrivers if you want to nerd out on this particular subject. Putting that fascinating issue aside, I'll begin by putting a taper on the shank of the tool in my lathe. Now you can also do this by chucking it up in a battery powered drill and hitting it on the belt grinder. The correct angle for a true Phillips head screwdriver is 57 degrees and it should actually have a blunt end. So here's how I milled the actual slotty webby bladey bits of the screwdriver, the business end. As I did with the gunsmithing screwdrivers, I'll be using a mill and a 5C collet block. Again, details on this whole process is shown in the previous video about the gunsmithing screwdrivers. Once again, I'll use an edge finder to locate the center of the rod, zeroing the DRO, repeating the process on the other side, then dividing by two to get a zero at the center line. I've also put an index block on the vise in my mill to locate the collet block repeatedly so I can just shove it back against that thing again and again and it's always gonna end up in the same place. Now I'll mill a chunk out of the top right corner of the tool. Next, we'll pop the vise open, flip the block 90 degrees, snugging it up against the index block, and we'll just repeat that last operation exactly in each quadrant, and we'll have a perfectly symmetrical blade on our screwdriver, in theory. Now, I did calculations to locate this exactly. It's pretty simple math, but for whatever reason, I ended up having to diddle around with it and take a couple passes to make everything work out totally symmetrically. The key is that the Z depth needs to be exactly the same as the amount that you munch out radially on the Y axis. Now, this is super simple in theory, but if any of your measurements is off by a thou or two, which is really not hard to do, then things will end up out of whack. Now the nice thing about this is that if you want to make a whole set of screwdrivers this way, 
once you set that center line and once you get everything measured right, it's just a matter of popping in one shank or collet after another and more or less repeating the same thing over and over and over until you have a big old pile of screwdrivers in all different shapes and sizes. Once the milling's complete, I'll heat treat them as I did in the other videos. Now just in case you're jumping in here and you haven't watched those previous videos and you think heat treat something you can skip over, it is not. Heat treating is the single most important step in making virtually all tools. Basically what we're doing is taking steel that's in a soft state right now and hardening it to the level of hardness that it needs to have so that it won't strip out when you're turning screws with it. I heat the tools to 1500 Fahrenheit, quench them in oil, then temper them at 600 Fahrenheit to soften them up a little bit and make them more resilient. And now we're on to the handles. Again, this has been covered extensively in other videos, so we'll just play some cool music and let you watch the pretty lights. The wood I'm using here is a spalted timber I call 10 bucks. I was at my wood supplier and I saw this cool looking piece of wood that had been used to support a pallet. And I asked the guy working in the warehouse what kind of wood it was. He said, eh, let's call it 10 bucks. Sold. Had no idea what kind of wood it was, so neither do I. Anyway, I kept it on the spindle so that I could put multiple coats of linseed oil on. Then put it back on the lathe to buff it. Yeah, that didn't really work. I'm not really wild about how it came out, but it's not terrible. Lesson learned. If I had it to do all over again, I would put a polyurethane clear coat on it. But still, it came out fine. I'll install a 5 8 inch brass ferrule and an anti-rotation cross pin to keep the shank of the tool from spinning around. And that's all, folks. So here's the full set of screwdrivers that I made for my son, Jake. Hope you enjoyed this project. We got more videos to come in the Jake's Tool series, so keep an eye out for those. Thanks for watching, and see you soon.
Thanks for watching, guys. If you like what we're doing here, please subscribe and make sure that you click on that bell so you get notified of all the latest videos. Want to buy a knife from me? Check out my modern blades at tacticsarmory.com. Digging the channel? You can support our video making efforts on Patreon. You know, I've been banging away on these videos for like 10 years, so I hope you'll show some love for all that hard work. Link in the cards and descriptions. Finally, if you're interested in making Japanese swords, check out my full line of Japanese sword videos where I show how to forge Japanese swords as well as how to polish them and how to make fittings, handles, and scabbards. WalterSorrelsBlades.com